In this video, we're going to talk about adding new users to your blog. This gives your blog a more of a community type feel, and you are able to get others' points of views, which basically that's what a blog was meant for in the very beginning anyway, but it's just kind of grown and morphed into so many other things over time. But as far as adding new users, it's pretty cool, pretty easy. Let me show you. We log into our dashboard, and then over here on the left-hand side, let me scroll down a bit here, uh, first off, I want to show you under general settings. So if this is all closed up, we go to the down arrow, click on general. And we've been here before, but I want to just point this part out that about midway down we see membership. This, If this is checked, then anybody can register. And if anybody can register, you want to make sure that the roles of those that are registering just off the street are subscriber because if you give anything higher than that that's just giving too much power to somebody that you just know nothing about more of an ideal situation is to have this unchecked of course there's more manual labor involved with this but to have this unchecked and if somebody wants to register that you do that for them and then simply email them their username and password but if you don't want that, if you don't want the manual part of that involved, then you go ahead and check this box and allow them to be a subscriber when they first sign up. Then you can always bump up their roles to other more powerful levels of usership. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and leave this as subscriber and anyone can register. And whenever we cover the widgets sections in an upcoming video, we'll show you how this can play a part. In other words, basically how people can sign up. Click on Save Changes. Now we're going to head on over to the User section. We'll go and close that up. Hit the drop down arrow just to see what options we have. We're going to go to Add New. And here you see that there's a couple of things that are required the username, the email, and then the password twice, just for confirmation purposes but it doesn't hurt to put in that person's first name, last name, and if they have a website, toss it in there as well. And once that's done, you have this box checked. This is optional, but you can have this box checked and make sure you assign them the appropriate role. Again, I suggest subscriber. You can always change this later after they've signed up and kind of proven themselves, if you will. Can you tell that I'm just a little paranoid? And then with this box checked, as soon as you click on add user, then the E, the um, password and username will be emailed to them based on the information you've entered here. So let me show you also under authors and users this will show us who's already been subscribed if you will and the information given we go back up here to the top just a bit you can see right here you can add new users from this page and you can check out all kinds of other information how many contributors you have or how many users you have that have the contributor role author role editor role administrator role and so on and you can check these that uh, let's say have the subscriber role all those that have signed up just off the street and you want to bump them up to a contributor well you just check them all and then you can change the role to whatever you want and then click on change boom done and likewise if you want to get rid of them because they've not been so nice check them click on delete click on apply and they're gone that's how easy it is to manage your subscriber roles here now as far as the difference between administrator subscriber contributor author editor well I'm gonna go ahead and post the link here that you can go check out all the specific details but basically just going over this quickly a subscriber is the lowest end of the totem pole, the administrator is at the highest end of the totem pole. The administrator can do anything and everything. So if you provide administrator role to anybody else other than yourself, just be wary that they can kick you to the curb and you'll have no control over or access to this blog whatsoever. Unless of course you decide to go into your cPanel and just delete it all together, but that's totally up to you how you want to handle that. But subscriber, again, just on the other end of the spectrum, they can come in and they can check out the contents. That's it. In other words, they can read the post. That's it. A contributor is the next level up from the subscriber, and they can come in and they can add content, but only to a draft level. In other words, it still needs to be approved prior to the world being able to see the contributor's contributions. Now then, the author is the next step up from the contributor who can actually do the 
previewing and allowing the contributor's draft to become published. The author can also contribute and edit their own, but the editor is the next step up from the author and can do all of this in addition to adding content themselves. And then of course you got the administrator that can slap all these guys around. But that's basically the quick overview of their roles and the permissions allotted to them. So for a greater detailed description, here's the link to the wordpress.org page that covers those. So check that out to get a better idea as to what's involved with the different roles. Now then, as I had mentioned earlier, I wanted to show you on our page what it looks like whenever we have the role set up where a visitor to your blog can actually register themselves. So we click on this to go to our site and over here on the right hand side in the sidebar or however your theme is set up you'll have a widget called the meta widget. And of course you can name this whatever you want and we'll cover this in greater detail in that particular video but basically if we log out because right now the administrator moi, is logged in we head on back to our site this is how Joe or Jane Blow happens to see your site and they say, hey, that looks like a pretty cool site. I want to give them my two cents worth. They click on register or of course log in if they've already registered and they put in their username and email. Then they click on register. A password will be sent to them. They simply then, along with the link to log back in, they would then log in entering that password and username given to them and then they can go to their profile to change the password and well, hey, let me go ahead and show you what it looks like from the inside using those various roles. Now you've already seen it from the point of view of the all-powerful administrator role. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like from the subscriber role. This is it. So you can see that over here they don't have all the options available to the administrator, thank goodness, and they can come in and change the profile right here. They can change whatever color scheme they want. They can change their username. Oh wait, they cannot change their username. They can change their first name if they want, last name, nickname, and what will be displayed to the public. And the main thing that they might want to change, and you may want to suggest to them to change, is their password down here. And again with the strength indicator as I showed you earlier right there for them. And any additional information they want to add here, the better. And that's from the subscriber point of view. You see the tools, not much. Whatever tools that have the subscriber role available to it is what's going to be available here. So let's go ahead and log out and then log in as a contributor. You see they've got a little bit more of a dashboard to work with. They've got the, the quick press. But remember with the contributor they can add content, just not publish it. It will be added in a draft form. You can see they can also come in and change the info in their profile and under the tools, not a whole lot. The contact, if they wanted to edit that, comments, and posts. Again, everything's pretty much the same here except for their content will be in the form of a draft. So let's go ahead and log out of here and see what it looks like from the author's point of view. Again, similar, and there's not a big difference here except that they have a little more power and what they can do is add additional parts to their post and of course they can also authorize the drafts. And under the tools, pretty much the same as the others, not a lot. Again, the content or the contact, the profile, here they can also add different media whereas in the past our, uh, the contributors and subscribers cannot but they can also add new posts and go beyond just the draft stage because with the contributor they do not have the publish here they only have the save as draft and then of course with the editor let's log in as an editor and see what we've got and as you might think the editor will probably have a little bit more power than the author, contributor, subscriber, but not quite as much as the administrator. Administrator's left hand man kind of sorta. Of. As you can see they can administer links, pages, as well as the rest of this that the authors have access to. 
And that's basically it. That's going to bring us to the end of how to add users to your blog. I hope you learned something. Hope you feel a little more comfortable about letting those folks in. Thank you much for watching.